Have you ever noticed how tables turn? It's wild how those who once doubted you, mistreated you, or even walked away are now realizing their biggest mistake. Imagine this, someone you thought was out of your life for good an ex-friend, maybe even an enemy is sitting there, wishing they could reach out to you right now. They find themselves in a situation they can't manage, and they realize you're the only one who can help. However, there's a catch, they have no clue if you'd even be willing to respond to their call. Let's explore what occurs when karma comes knocking and regret sets in. This includes a particular individual who wronged you, whether they were an enemy, someone who believed they were your enemy, or even an ex-friend. They genuinely wish they could turn back time and undo their actions. Interestingly, this person not only regrets their behavior, but they also now long to reach out to you for help. It seems this pattern recurs in your life. Those who have wronged you often end up needing your assistance later. You're likely thinking, wow, the audacity. Some of these individuals understand they don't have the right to ask anything of you, yet they still try regardless. Don't be surprised if someone who no longer shares a positive relationship with you, perhaps a former friend, suddenly reaches out. You might find yourself thinking, wait, didn't you dislike me? Why are you asking for my help now? It's certainly an unusual situation, but remain strong and trust your instincts. Someone who has spoken negatively about you, whether at work or within your family, may try to reconnect or get closer to you now. The reason? You're truly shining, and people are starting to realize how much they miss your presence when you're not around. Your energy naturally attracts others, and many of you have always been the type to easily make friends. However, you're coming to understand that in this lifetime, you can't be everyone's friend, no matter how much you wish to be kind and loving. As light workers, healers, or chosen ones, whatever term resonates with you, you're beginning to grasp that attempting to befriend everyone, especially those who don't treat you well, will hinder your ability to fully step into your purpose. There's definitely someone in your life who didn't offer support, didn't have your back, or simply treated you poorly, and you made the choice to walk away. This could be someone who initially sought closeness with you, but right from the start, you sensed something was off. Whether they were a potential friend or romantic interest, your intuition told you they weren't as genuine as they seemed. You might have rejected them, distanced yourself, or let them go entirely, and now they're looking to come back. What's unfolding here is that you are someone people regret mistreating, even if they don't always acknowledge it. Some may not even realize their wrongdoing. You've likely encountered a fair share of delusional or narcissistic individuals, those who crave your energy and healing without offering anything in return. They might even perceive themselves as the victims, believing it's your responsibility to help them. But here's the truth, you're finally learning that it's perfectly acceptable to say no to those who expect you to sacrifice yourself for their benefit. You're shedding the guilt associated with setting boundaries. Many of you have gone above and beyond for others, only to realize they didn't appreciate your efforts and might have even tried to bring you down in the process. So, if you've recently let someone or something go, or if you're feeling a bit disheartened about certain friendships or relationships, keep this in mind, there are definitely individuals who regret treating you poorly. Even if they don't express it, they certainly feel it. You're stepping into your power, and that's something they can't overlook. Someone is planning to re-enter your life, and they're strategizing on how to make it happen. This individual, who may have wronged you in the past, regrets their actions and misses your presence. You've always been the kind of person that others look up to for your leadership and wisdom. Regardless of your gender, you embody strong masculine and feminine traits that inspire both men and women around you. You've become a dependable figure because you consistently have the answers and show up when it matters most. When you're not around, people genuinely feel your absence and regret how they treated you. For some of you, this individual may have thought you were too busy for them at certain points, yet you still made an effort to be present when it counted. Now, they miss you and might even be appearing in your dreams. Many of you have experienced friendships where boundaries blurred, with people acting as if you were more than just friends due to their high demands of you. You may have even felt like you were in a relationship with some of these individuals, but ultimately, they were asking too much without reciprocating the same energy. The person who treated you poorly now regrets their actions and wishes to re-enter your life. They likely viewed you as competition, even though all you ever wanted was to support them. 
This jealousy or insecurity may have fueled their behavior. Whether they're a fire sign, air sign, or otherwise, their stubbornness made them challenging to deal with. Meanwhile, you always endeavored to be there for them and others, but eventually, you realized you couldn't keep giving without receiving anything in return. When you first met this person, you might have seen them as free-spirited and independent, much like yourself. However, you eventually recognized that they were merely mirroring your energy. They admired you and aspired to be like you, but they struggled to replicate your authenticity and success. This individual was attracted to your stability, your ambitious nature, and your effortless way of handling social situations, yet they also harbored resentment towards you for it. In their attempt to emulate you, they may have developed envy, which fueled their negative behavior. But before moving forward, take a moment to reaffirm your faith in the divine. If this message resonates with you, please comment, yes, below. As we journey through life, it's essential to remember that our existence is defined by what we choose to give, not merely by what we receive. Acts of kindness and generosity reflect the true essence of our lives. Consider this, a modest contribution of just $40 can support a child for several days. Think about the profound impact your generosity can have on their lives and your spiritual growth. Are you ready? Let's take this step forward together. Interestingly, this individual may now be facing a similar situation to what they put you through, and they want to reach out for help. They recognize that you navigated adversity with remarkable strength and grace, and deep down, they secretly wish they possessed your resilience. However, they are also aware that they have caused too much harm, and reaching out would cross a boundary they shouldn't violate. It's ironic that they now find themselves in need of the same support and wisdom you once provided, yet they know that access is no longer available to them. In some cases, this could even be a former lover or romantic interest who viewed you more as a competitor than a partner. They may have subjected you to unnecessary hardships, hoping to see you stumble, but instead, you emerged even stronger. Now, they are facing similar challenges and yearn for the strength you exhibited to help them through. There is someone who used to capture a lot of your attention and reactions, but you have since grown and elevated so much energetically that they no longer affect your life. You've stopped checking in on them, and others aren't mentioning them anymore. Yet, you remain on their mind. They obsess over you and miss the connection you once shared, wishing they still had you in their lives. This could be an ex-lover or ex-friend, and I sense another person as well, perhaps someone who perceived you as competition. They now regret how they treated you and wish they had taken a different approach. These individuals are beginning to face the consequences of their actions, recognizing that mistreating you has led to negative karmic repercussions. They've lost their spiritual protection and want to seek higher guidance, but feel blocked due to the betrayal they inflicted on you. While you have consistently followed your intuition and chosen the higher path, they did not. Now, they can see that you've moved on and no longer have any concern for them. They wish they had made better choices with you and could still be a part of your life, but your energy has far surpassed theirs. There is also someone who may have competed with you right in front of your eyes, and now they are facing their own karma. Ironically, they are looking to you for help, despite receiving the consequences for how they treated you. Additionally, I sense someone who regrets not pursuing a romantic relationship with you, they may have chosen someone else or simply missed their chance. Likely, they feared you would break their heart, leading them to distance themselves, and now they regret not seizing the opportunity. They wish they had followed their heart instead of opting for a logical, fear-driven decision. Currently, many individuals are experiencing regret over how they treated you, realizing that you were someone they could depend on. You faced so much in your own life that people naturally look to you for guidance. However, you're recognizing that you can't always be the one everyone turns to for support. You've been working on distancing yourself from draining relationships and seeking connections with those who also provide support in return. During this healing period, you're becoming aware of your worth and moving away from those who didn't appreciate or reciprocate the energy you gave. Now, you're stepping into a stronger, more balanced version of yourself, investing only in relationships that uplift you as well. You're concentrating on your own well-being right now and doing an incredible job, but I sense that someone still harbors feelings for you. They regret not fighting for this connection and are filled with remorse. 
They talk about you and watch you thrive in your life. You've embraced a free-spirited energy, choosing a higher path for yourself without fear of others' opinions. You're not afraid to leave people behind, express your truth, or follow a higher calling, even if others judge you for it. Many people aren't ready to live in this way. They remain stuck in karmic cycles, making decisions out of fear or to please others. In contrast, you've risen above that, and as a result, you're embodying an unbothered energy that is focused on yourself. Many people wish they could reach out to you right now, share what's happening in their lives, and seek your help, but they find themselves unable to do so. A number of these individuals wronged you in the past, and now you're beyond their reach. Some may even be in situations where they can't communicate with you due to the choices they've made. I'm sensing three distinct energies, an ex-friend or ex-lover who became competitive with you after you offered your support, someone who turned into your enemy when they could have been your ally, and another who had the chance to have you in their life but chose not to. All three are feeling the weight of their decisions and regretting how they treated you. Even though you, like anyone, have your insecurities, many people perceive you as completely confident in everything you do. You exude a strong, passionate King of Wands energy, self-assured in your decisions. You don't reveal your struggles or insecurities, and as a natural leader, others often overlook the challenges you face behind the scenes. They only see you emerge victorious, maintaining a positive attitude and learning from every experience with grace. What they don't realize is that you endure more than most. You faced attempts from people, some of whom were close to you, to dim your light or hold you back. While it has been difficult to process at times, your angels are reminding you to stay strong. Keep moving forward and keep shining, because deep down, all these people share one thing in common, whether they acknowledge it or not, they admire and respect the power and resilience you embody. You've been focusing on your own growth, and it's clear that many people admire and aspire to be like you. However, not everyone knows how to manage the high vibrational energy you radiate. Currently, you're in a healing phase, and others are taking notice. Even though you want nothing to do with certain individuals, they are still closely observing you, perhaps even through fake accounts. There are definitely those who regret removing themselves from your life and can only watch from the sidelines. I sense that some of them resonate with Justin Bieber's lyric, If I can't have you, I'll settle for the ghost of you. They yearn to be near you, but find themselves unable to do so. It's not just because you've likely set boundaries, changed your number, or made yourself less available, there's also an element of divine intervention involved. For someone who may be romantically interested in you, they are beginning to receive intuitive insights that they need to address their current situation before they can even think about approaching you. You're also exuding a King of Swords energy, making it clear that honesty is non-negotiable when it comes to any potential connection. Whether you resonate with divine masculine or feminine energy, you radiate a powerful, divine presence, which naturally attracts many people. Unfortunately, while many admire and love you, some choose to compete instead of collaborating or being supportive friends. Over time, these individuals come to realize their mistakes, and regret begins to settle in. I'm particularly sensing a former friend or acquaintance whom you went out of your way to help, whether it was with job searches, relationship issues, or emotional support. Despite all you offered, they still tried to undermine you, a decision they now deeply regret. While they may feel remorse, it's uncertain whether they've genuinely changed or if they are simply feeling sorry for their past actions. What is clear, however, is that you played a pivotal role in holding things together for them when you were part of their lives. Even now, from a distance, your strength and influence continue to inspire them. Many of you create content or share uplifting messages, and even though some may deny it, they still listen to and remember your advice. You've influenced their lives in ways they might not be ready to acknowledge. Your presence and the kindness you've shown in the past continue to leave a lasting impression. Now, you are embracing new passions, positive energy, and even a newfound love for yourself. It's evident to everyone around you that you're entering a new chapter in your life. In fact, you may have become unrecognizable to some who once knew you, both in appearance and energy. While you might still be just a phone call away for some, on a deeper level, you are now unreachable to those who have hurt or mistreated you. When you chose to walk away, you continued to elevate yourself. 
The only power those individuals ever had over you was their ability to capture your attention with their drama. But once you severed ties and truly moved on, they lost that influence over you completely. Now, you're radiating with beauty, elegance, and a sense of royalty. Those who may have once taken you for granted are now witnessing your incredible growth and evolution from a distance. It required immense willpower for you to stop reaching out to these individuals. For some, it was a real struggle, while for others, it was an easy decision as their true colors became impossible to ignore. You are now enjoying a significant glow up and stepping into a new chapter of your life. Keep pushing forward and hustling, knowing that those who mistreated you may come to regret their actions and want to re-enter your life. As you continue on this path, concentrate on the new opportunities ahead and ensure that anyone wanting to return demonstrates genuine proof of their change. Boundaries are essential. Your inner light is attracting many people, but it's ultimately your choice to decide who deserves your time. Emerging from a challenging period, you are now prioritizing yourself, and it's starting to yield positive results. Imagine if you were assured that whatever you did for God's glory would succeed, what would you undertake? Once you identify what that might be, the crucial question then becomes, why aren't you already pursuing it? Fear is often the greatest obstacle, and the Bible frequently reminds us to fear not. Fear can prevent us from following God's calling. To truly grow, we must confront our fears. So, do you value personal growth enough to face your fears, or are you letting your fear of failure keep you from moving forward, even if it means remaining stagnant? Growth inherently involves risk, and risk brings fear. The choice is clear, confront your fear or avoid it and remain passive and stagnant. Often, we seek reassurance and a guarantee that everything will be alright before taking a leap, but God rarely provides that guarantee up front. True growth occurs when we are willing to take a step of faith without certainty. It's about trusting God and moving forward despite the uncertainty. To grow, you must push beyond your comfort zone. The fears you avoid become your boundaries. Think of fear as an invitation to evolve, to expand beyond your current limitations. It's a call to explore new possibilities and to grow in ways you haven't yet experienced. The Holy Spirit is most active when you step outside your familiar zone. You need to confront your fears now, rather than postponing them with promises of, someday, that never seem to materialize. Anything you're hesitant about or reluctant to do often gets deferred indefinitely, but it's essential to act today. God is telling us, you won't live forever. This means that real growth happens at the edge of your comfort zone. I firmly believe that growth always begins where your comfort ends, there's no convincing me otherwise. Every Sunday, I still feel uneasy standing up here, but I push through because growth and faith often lie beyond our comfort zones. Many people, driven by fear, busily stick to what's comfortable to avoid stepping out in faith. So, what would you undertake for God's glory if you knew it would succeed? The only way to find out is to take the leap. When you sense God calling you to something, the only way to confirm it is to act. Naturally, it must align with His Word and it helps to seek counsel from fellow believers if you have doubts. But if you find yourself asking, what if it doesn't work, consider this, what if it does? When I was a teenager at camp, I remember standing at the back of the worship service when Coach Bo Lee told me, Boy, when the singing is over, I want you to preach. I was stunned. Preach? In 45 seconds? I asked. Yep, he replied. I told him, Coach, I've only been a Christian for a couple of years and I'm not comfortable speaking in front of people. He retorted, Comfortable? Did you think Daniel was comfortable in the lion's den? Or Paul and Silas in prison? Or Jesus on the cross? What should I talk about? I asked. Coach Lee simply said, talk about Jesus. Talk about John 3 verse 16. Go. So, I did. I preached a sermon on John 3 verse 16, and a lot of kids came to faith. As I left the platform, Coach Lee pointed at me and said, When you teach the Bible, I see two things, you come alive, and they come alive. Then I had to sit down with my dad, who wasn't a believer at the time, and tell him I wasn't going to medical school, I was going to seminary. He asked, 
what seminary? I explained, it's preacher school. His response was, preacher school? You only work half a day a week and study one book. Why do you need a whole school for that? I shrugged and said, I don't know. They make you go. And I went ahead and did it. If you place your trust not in your circumstances, because honestly, who knows how things will turn out, but in him, that's what truly matters. We can't predict the future, right now, we only see things dimly. So how do you figure out what he wants you to do? My approach to understanding God's call is simple, pray, make your best guess, and take action. Pray, guess, and go. When making that guess, it's crucial to stay grounded in God's word and surrounded by his people. Follow what he tells you. In John chapter 3, Jesus compares following God's will to the wind. You can't see the wind itself, only its effects. You don't know where it's coming from or where it's going. You can feel it and observe how it changes things, but you never actually see the wind. It's only when you set sail and let the wind guide you that you experience its power and direction. If you could accomplish anything for the glory of God with the certainty of success, what would it be? Once you have an idea, don't just listen to the word but put it into action. It's time to move beyond merely hearing and start doing. I frequently remind people, especially the younger generation, which growth doesn't happen in comfort, it happens when we're stretched and challenged. Today, I believe this message is for me as well, God is pushing us out of our comfort zones. Scientists and psychologists agree that remaining in comfort zones stifles growth in all areas, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. For example, when an eaglet is developing, the parent eagle removes feathers from the nest to make the eaglet uncomfortable, encouraging it to spread its wings and learn to fly. Similarly, God uses discomfort in our lives to teach us to soar. Growth starts at the edge of your comfort zone. You need to let go of your comfort and be willing to step into the unknown. Success often comes from venturing into discomfort, so embrace the challenge of being uncomfortable. God's call isn't about staying in the familiar, it's about taking bold steps of faith. While he doesn't promise comfort, he does promise the strength to be courageous. Today, I'm here to urge you to step out of your comfort zone, the boat of comfort. God is calling you to move beyond your familiar boundaries. He wants to stretch you, help you grow, and push you to achieve more than you think possible. For some of you, God has given you a vision or dream, perhaps years or even decades ago, but you're still clinging to the safety of the boat because it's comfortable. Remember, God doesn't call you without also equipping you with the courage to act. It's time to leave the boat behind and pursue that dream. Just like Peter stepped out of the boat and began walking on water, you too need to take that first step. Some of you might be waiting for God to part the sea before you make your move, but God is saying, step out, and I will part the sea. Faith involves setting bold goals and trusting in a limitless God. It's about committing fully and believing that God is working behind the scenes to make things happen. We're not here to play it safe, we're here to take risks. I've always been drawn to adventures, and I encourage you to ask God for a bold vision, a dream of how you can align your life with his plan to make a significant impact in the world for his glory. Then, go after that dream with everything you've got and witness the results. It's easy to settle into a comfortable life with things that fall short of God's best for us. We know there's more potential within us, but we often hesitate to stretch ourselves or take risks. We worry about what might go wrong. What if the door doesn't open or the plan fails? We can become complacent with negative influences, unhealthy habits, or feelings of self-pity, always focusing on what we've missed or how we're disadvantaged. The danger of staying in our comfort zone is that we miss out on our true destiny. When God is calling you to a higher purpose, there will be a choice to make, comfort or calling. Will you stay where you are, avoiding challenges, discipline, and fear, or will you step out in faith? take a risk, and embrace the call. The decision is yours. If you're never stepping out of your comfort zone, you're not truly growing. Growth requires stretching your faith and pushing beyond your limits. The enemy will always try to convince you of what you can't do, but if you ignore those lies, you'll hear a quiet, encouraging voice that tells you what you can achieve. 
You might wonder, what if I try and fail? But consider this, what if you try and succeed? What if taking that step of faith elevates you to a new level and reveals abilities you never knew you had? What if you discover you can do things you've never done before, walk in freedom, lead with confidence, live a fulfilled life? Don't let the what-ifs discourage you from pursuing your destiny. Instead, flip them around. What if God's favor is upon you? What if unexpected opportunities arise? What if you overcome long-standing challenges? The key is to try because if you don't, you'll never know what's possible. Playing it safe offers no rewards. As Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. Many of you have the potential to be used in incredible ways, but you hesitate to take the risk. Here's a practical challenge from this parable. Without taking risks for God, there are no rewards from Him. The best things in life come when you step out in faith and embrace the risk of trusting Him. God's greatest works in your life often happen in those moments when you say, I'm terrified to trust you with this, but I'm choosing to step out in faith anyway. If you're never willing to take risks, you won't accomplish much in this world. So rise up, take that risk, make that leap, and take action today. Don't let another day pass without moving forward. We aren't here just to read about others living adventurous lives, we're called to live them ourselves. Think about the irony of our lives, we become content with routines, binge watch TV shows about other people's lives, or play video games about adventures while staying stuck in our own safe zones. We scroll through social media, looking at others' lives instead of living our own. We're meant for adventure, but to embrace the adventure God has for us, we need to shift from routine to risk. Routine can easily become a rut, a series of actions done day in and day out without questioning their purpose or impact. As you approach the end of your life, Consider whether you've truly lived the life you were meant to, made the difference you were called to make, and fulfilled your true purpose. We often find ourselves stuck in ruts. When we stay in a routine long enough, it creates a rut, and if we remain in that rut too long, it can become a grave. Many people spend their lives trapped in this mundane cycle, simply existing rather than truly living. But Jesus tells us in John 10 verse 10 that he came to give us life in abundance, not a monotonous, predictable existence. So many of us are conditioned to stay safe, to avoid excitement, and to believe that we should not expect too much. This mindset often seeps into our faith, leading us to think, don't expect too much from God. Just stay safe and stick to the status quo. But living in fear and clinging to the safety of our controlled little world prevents us from stepping into the purpose God has for our lives. Faith requires risk. It means doing things we cannot accomplish on our own, things that require God's intervention. The enemy knows that if he can't take our souls, he can at least make us live safe, keeping us from stepping out in faith and fulfilling God's call on our lives. The Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. If we want to please God, we need to embrace a life of risk and faith. To move forward, we must step out of our comfort zones and stop being content with just reading about other people's adventures. There's a story God wants you to live. What should truly scare us is not taking risks but the regret of reaching the end of our lives and realizing we never stepped out to do what God called us to do. The fear of missing out on our divine purpose and living a life of regret should be our greatest concern. Imagine you're walking through a dense fog where your vision is limited and every step is an act of trust. This is much like our walk with God, a journey through the unknown, relying solely on His guidance and not our limited perception. Today, I will share with you profound insights into walking by faith and not by sight or emotions. I am also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus, so watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. My friends in this world, we are often tempted to rely on what we can see and feel. Yet, let us embrace the wisdom of Hebrews 11 verse 1, which declares, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This profound truth anchors us in the midst of life's ever-changing tides. It calls us to place our trust in God's plan, even when it stretches beyond our understanding or visible horizon. Let us walk in faith, 
irrespective of the shifting sands of our circumstances and feelings. As we journey together, we will explore seven key insights that will help us navigate this path of faith. These insights will deepen our trust in the Lord and guide us in aligning our steps with His divine will. Number one, walking by faith, not your emotions. Life often presents us with a roller coaster of emotions, and you know what? But our emotions can be misleading, taking us on a path that deviates from God's plan. The story of Elijah in 1 Kings 19 offers a powerful lesson on this. After a significant victory at Mount Carmel, Elijah plunged into despair and fear due to Jezebel's threats. Despite having just witnessed God's mighty power, his emotions in that moment overshadowed his faith. This reminds us that even the strongest among us can falter if we lean too heavily on our emotional responses. My friends, in moments of emotional turmoil, let us hold on to the truth found in Psalm 56 verse 3, which says, Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. This scripture not only addresses our fears, but also our broader emotional responses. It teaches us that our faith should not be swayed by the ever-changing tides of our emotions. Instead, we are called to place our trust in decisions in the steadfast love of God, not in the temporary whispers of our feelings. Walking by faith and not by emotions requires us to cultivate a deep sense of discernment and reliance on the Holy Spirit. It means that in moments of fear, anxiety, or even overwhelming joy, we pause and align these feelings with God's Word. It's about understanding that emotions are part of our human experience, but they should not be the compass that guides our decisions or our belief in God's promises. Therefore, as we navigate the challenges of life, let us seek wisdom and guidance from the Holy Spirit. Let us train ourselves to recognize when our emotions are leading us astray and stand in faith. Listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit and turn to prayer and scripture for truth in moments when our emotions threaten to overwhelm our faith. Let us remember Elijah and learn to rise above our immediate feelings, trusting in God's eternal plan and unfailing love. My friends, let us strive to walk by faith, grounded in the truth of God's word, rather than being swayed by the fleeting and often deceptive nature of our emotions. In doing so, we find stability and clarity anchored in the love and wisdom of our Heavenly Father. Number two, trusting in God's timing over our own. The concept of time often perplexes us. We live in a world that revolves around schedules, deadlines, and immediate gratification. This fast-paced life can sometimes make the virtue of patience seem like a forgotten relic. Yet, in the realm of faith, time takes on a different dimension. As we ponder on the story of Noah, we see a man who operated not on conventional time, but on God's time. Building an ark with no cloud in the sky, Noah's faith was not rooted in what he could see or understand. It was anchored in the promises of God. In this context, Isaiah 55 verse 8 echoes profoundly, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. This verse isn't just about God's higher thinking, but also about His perfect timing. Noah's steadfast obedience to a task that appeared illogical on the surface teaches us an invaluable lesson about the true nature of unwavering faith. Our journey is often marred by our impatience and our lack of trust in God's timing. We want things to happen now, forgetting that God's timeline is always perfect, even when it seems delayed by our standards. Trusting in God's timing means embracing a season of waiting. It involves understanding that our immediate desires may not align with God's ultimate plan for us. This waiting is not passive, it's an active, faithful anticipation. It's about preparing our hearts, nurturing our faith, and staying committed to God's course, even when the horizon seems distant. Noah's faithfulness during his season of waiting, building an ark amidst doubt and ridicule, is a testament to the strength that comes from trusting in God's timing. Therefore, as we navigate through our lives, let us seek to embody Noah's unwavering faith. When faced with decisions, big or small, let us pause and consider God's timing. This perspective shift is not about inaction. It's about aligning our actions with God's divine schedule. In moments of impatience and uncertainty, let us recall Noah's ark, a symbol of trust and obedience in God's perfect timing. 
God guiding us to a deeper understanding of faith. Number three, surrendering personal ambitions to divine will. At times, our personal ambitions and dreams seem to chart our course. Yet, God's plan calls us to a different path. The story of Jonah vividly illustrates this struggle. Jonah was called to go to Nineveh, a task he initially ran from because it conflicted with his personal desires and prejudices. His journey, including the extraordinary experience inside the belly of a great fish, symbolizes the internal conflict we face when our plans clash with God's. As we reflect on Jonah's story, we are reminded of Proverbs 19 verse 21. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel that will stand. This verse teaches us about the supremacy of God's will over our own ambitions. Jonah's eventual decision to obey God despite his initial reluctance demonstrates the importance of surrendering our plans to God, trusting that his plans are not only different but better. Surrendering to God's will often means stepping outside our comfort zones and confronting our deepest fears and prejudices. For Jonah, going to Nineveh was not just about a physical journey, but also a spiritual transformation. This act of surrender is not a sign of weakness, but of profound strength and faith, acknowledging that our personal ambitions must align with God's higher purpose. Therefore, in our lives, when we find our ambitions clashing with God's call, let us remember Jonah's journey. It's a call to introspection and realignment, a reminder that our ultimate purpose is found not in the pursuit of our ambitions, but in aligning them with God's divine plan. Surrendering doesn't mean giving up on our dreams. It means reshaping them to fit into the grand narrative God has written for us. Number four, overcoming doubts with God's assurance. Doubts are a natural part of our faith journey. They challenge our beliefs and can lead to spiritual growth if navigated wisely. The story of Thomas, often labeled as Doubting Thomas, offers a unique perspective on this. After the resurrection of Jesus, Thomas struggled with doubt, unable to believe without seeing Jesus with his own eyes. His story is a reflection of our own moments of doubt, where we see tangible proof of God's presence and plan. In these moments, Jesus' words to Thomas resonate deeply, as recorded in John 20, verse 29, where he said, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. This verse is not just a rebuke of doubt, but an invitation to a deeper faith, a faith that believes in God's plan even when it's not visibly evident. Thomas's eventual declaration of faith upon seeing Jesus reminds us that our doubts, when surrendered to God, can lead to a stronger conviction in his plan for us. Overcoming doubt requires an intentional cultivation of faith and trust in God. It involves seeking him through his word, prayer, and the fellowship of believers. Thomas's story teaches us that it's okay to have questions or uncertainties, but we should not let them distance us from God. Instead, we should bring them to him, allowing his truth to guide and reassure us. As we face our doubts, let's be encouraged by Thomas's journey from skepticism to faith. Let us embrace our doubts not as hindrances, but as stepping stones to a deeper understanding and trust in God's plan. In our quest for answers, let us remain open to the ways God reveals His will and purpose for our lives. Number five, embracing transformation through God's guidance. Personal transformation is often a key aspect of aligning with God's plan. The transformation of Saul to Paul is one of the most striking examples of this. Saul, initially a persecutor of Christians, experienced a radical transformation on the road to Damascus. This was not just a change of heart, but a complete redirection of his life's purpose. Guided by God's hand, Paul's transformation, as he later became known, was marked by a total surrender to God's will. As he states in Galatians 2 verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. This profound declaration highlights the essence of embracing God's plan. It's about letting go of our old selves and allowing God to reshape our identity and purpose according to His divine will. Embracing transformation through God's guidance requires humility and a willingness to let go of our former ways. For Paul, this meant abandoning his previous beliefs and practices to fully embrace the teachings of Christ. This kind of transformation can be challenging, 
as it often requires us to step into unfamiliar territory and adopt new ways of thinking and living. Therefore, as we seek to align with God's plan, let us be open to the transformative work He wants to do in us. Like Paul, let us be willing to undergo the changes that come with following Christ. This transformation is not a loss of self, but a discovery of our true identity and purpose in God. It's a journey from who we are to who God intends us to be. Number six, persevering in faith despite challenges. The journey of faith is often marked by challenges and trials. These moments test our perseverance and commitment to God's plan. The story of the prophet Hosea is a profound example of unwavering faith amidst adversity. Hosea was called to marry an unfaithful woman, Gomer, as a symbol of God's love for an unfaithful Israel. This difficult path was not a reflection of personal failure, but a profound illustration of God's unwavering commitment and love. Hosea's life reminds us of James 1 verse 12, which says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. This verse highlights the virtue of perseverance. Enduring challenges in our faith journey is not about silently bearing pain, but also about remaining steadfast in our trust in God's plan. Even when it leads us through difficult and incomprehensible paths, persevering in faith requires us to look beyond our current struggles and focus on the greater purpose that God has for us. Hosea's unwavering commitment to God, despite the pain and humiliation he endured, serves as a powerful testament to the strength that comes from divine assurance. It's about understanding that our trials are not just obstacles, but opportunities for growth and deeper reliance on God. As we face our own challenges, let us draw inspiration from Hosea's perseverance. Let us remember that our trials are temporary, but the lessons and strength we gain from them have eternal significance. In times of hardship, let us cling to the promise of the crown of life, persevering in faith and trusting in the unfailing love and plan of God. Number seven, walking in faith, not by sight. The essence of walking by faith is beautifully captured in the life of Abraham. Called to leave his homeland and go to an unknown land, Abraham's journey was marked by faith in God's promises, even when they seemed distant and unattainable. He believed in God's promise of a son despite his and Sarah's old age and was willing to sacrifice his promised son, Isaac, trusting in God's plan above his understanding. Abraham's life resonates with 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7, For we walk by faith, not by sight. This principle defines our Christian walk, a journey based not on visible evidence but on the assurance of God's promises. Abraham's willingness to step into the unknown, trusting in God's word, sets a powerful example for us. Walking by faith, not by sight, means trusting in God's promises even when they defy our logic or timelines. It involves letting go of our need for visible proof and relying on the certainty of God's word. Abraham's journey, filled with ups and downs, was a testament to the fact that faith is not a straight path, but a series of steps taken in trust and obedience. Therefore, as we walk our own journey of faith, let us be inspired by Abraham's example. Let us embrace the uncertainties and challenges with faith, knowing that our sight is limited but God's vision is infinite. In every step, in every decision, let us walk by faith, holding on to the promises of God, assured that His plan for us is perfect and His timing is impeccable. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, you are mighty and majestic. Your glory fills the heavens and the earth. You are the rock of ages, the great I am, the one who is, who is, and who is to come. Your wisdom is unsearchable, and your power is like no other. In your presence, every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that you are Lord. I lift your name on high, for you are worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. I thank you, Father, for your manifold blessings in my life and in the lives of my loved ones. Thank you for your unfailing love, your boundless grace, and your merciful kindness that greets me each morning. Your faithfulness is my shield and buckler. 
Thank you for being my guide, my comforter, and my steadfast hope in times of uncertainty. Forgive me, Lord, for the times I have leaned on my understanding, for moments when my faith faltered and I walked by sight. I ask for your forgiveness, cleanse my heart from all unrighteousness. I also forgive those who have wronged me, releasing all resentment and hurt. For in forgiveness, there is freedom and peace. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare that I am walking by faith and not by sight. I rebuke every spirit of doubt, fear, and confusion. I bind any influence that contradicts your will for my life, and I ask for wisdom, clarity, and discernment. Lord, I trust in your unfailing provision. You are my provider, and I hold on to your promise to supply all my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Give me this day my daily bread and my daily benefits. Heavenly Father, I pray that your hand of healing reaches out to touch me and my loved ones, bringing restoration and wholeness in every area where we need your divine healing. I pray against every attack of the enemy, be it on our health, our minds, or our spirits. Protect us, Lord, from all harm and keep us under the shadow of your wings. Deliver us from all evil and lead us away from temptation. Lord, I pray for your blessings upon my life and the lives of my loved ones. As I say this prayer together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We stand in agreement, united in our desire to follow your plan and purpose for our lives. Guide us, Lord, as we navigate through life's challenges and decisions. Help us to embrace your will, overcome our doubts, and find joy and fulfillment in your divine plan. Lord, pour out your Spirit upon us. Fill us with the courage and strength to face whatever lies ahead. May we, like Abraham, trust in your promises, even when they seem distant. Help us to persevere through trials, knowing that you are refining us for a greater purpose. May our lives be a testament to your faithfulness and love. In the name of Jesus, we declare that we walk by faith, not by sight or our emotions. We declare that everything is working for us and not against us. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Let your will be done in our lives as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, amen.